Are you searching for the perfect endgame base that costs an ungodly amount of materials but also looks really cool? Well, then you've stumbled across the right video. This base uses one of my favorite layouts, that being a fortress design, and also has a whole bunch of awesome features, so let's get straight into the tour. All right, starting off the tour, let's take a look around the exterior and layout of the base. So if I just take to the skies right here, you can see the general layout. So this base is similar to my previous Ultimate Survival base in that it's a circular design, but this one has been jacked up on steroids. So the previous base only had a small circular wall around it with a roofed base in the center, but this time we have a higher wall, a bigger base in the center, and we also have these little mini bases around the actual walls as well. So at the north, east, south, and west sides, we have these kind of bigger but shorter little areas where we actually have some useful stuff inside, and then on the northeast, southeast, yada yada, yeah, in all these spots here, we have some smaller watchtowers, which are pretty small, so we couldn't really fit anything in there except for a ladder all the way up to the top, and this is kind of where you'd go to defend your base, I guess. Taking a look at the actual exterior design of the walls, as you can see, we've used a whole bunch of azaleas around the place to keep the walls looking nice and interesting, and as for the actual wall design, it is a pretty simple, just kind of checkered pattern going between stone bricks and stone. On top of the stone bricks, we have some slabs on top of those as well. I spent probably an hour in total trying to just come up with an interesting wall design and this was the best I could come up with. It's really hard having this like kind of diagonal shape, but I feel like this simplistic design is really easy to build and still looks good as well. Now, as we travel around the outside, you'll see we have our little watchtowers as well, where we've got more azaleas and also this nice design with a big window on the sides. We also have a bunch of lanterns around the place as well to keep the outside of your base nice and bright so that less mobs spawn close to your base. And this is kind of the outside of the design of the bigger separate areas. I don't really know what to call them, but yeah, and this is pretty much just repeated across the entire base. So even though this base is pretty big and does look pretty like intricate, it is really easy to make as like all of these corner things are basically the exact same design, just repeated in every section. And same with these three outer ones as well. And then this gatehouse here is a little bit different from these ones in that we have a slightly different design on the outside front here, but overall it's really easy to make. And then we of course have the big base in the center, which is really easy to build. So that's enough talking about the exterior. Let's finally head on inside. And as you can see for the gatehouse here, we actually have a triple wide fence gate so that you can actually bring in any horses and stuff like that. And an interesting feature with the gatehouse here is we actually have a ladder that goes up to the top so you can defend your base from mobs or whatever you want to do. You might notice as well on top of some of these, we also have some decorations and it's just to keep it looking a little bit more interesting. So heading on inside through the base, as you can see, we're greeted with the main base here and a whole bunch of crop fields around the place. Yeah, as you can see, we have this pathway here that leads to the center of the base and then a smaller pathway that kind of surrounds the base. And we can use this pathway to pretty much just go around the entire base and head to any of the separated areas that we want. And so for the crop farms, they're pretty much just standard crop farms. We're alternating between wheat and carrots. I've mainly done that just because it looks really cool, especially for the thumbnail. As we head over to the back, we've got one section here that has actually been replaced with animal farms, as I felt that was uh, definitely needed. Now, if you feel like three pens isn't enough for you, you can, of course, just replace the one next to it with more pens. What the hell is going on there? Some prime butt sniffing action. But yeah, these sheep were doing something pretty horrific earlier. I'll probably show a picture of it right here. I'm not sure what they were doing, but uh, yeah. But yeah, so that's pretty much for all of the exterior interior area. Before we head into the actual main base, I'm gonna show you all of the watchtowers first, which uh, I mean, they're just pretty boring. They're just a door with a ladder, that's it. And now I'll show you the actual bigger buildings on all of the sides. So this first one here is our offhand storage area where we have a whole bunch of chests on the left and right side. So on the sides, we've got some single chests as this is really all we could fit in. And then in the middles here, we have a whole bunch of double chests as well. And this is repeated, of course, on the right side. At the back here, we have a ladder that heads up to the roof, of course. And we have a ladder on each of them as well, so I'm not gonna explain that for the next ones. But heading over to the back one now, and heading inside, we have our nether portal. It's a bit of a weird configuration, as this is the only place that I could add a nether portal in, just kind of in the center. But for ease of use, I have made this a toggleable nether portal, so pressing the button on the left will turn it on. You can still run through this and up the ladder if you needed to, but if you wanna turn it off, you can just press this button here twice, which will deploy a water bucket and then suck it back up. It's a little bit annoying, but Oh well. Now heading over to the final exterior base nodule thing, we have our mine entrance. So on the left side, we have a couple of furnaces and on the right, we have a couple of chests as well. And then if we look down, as you can see, we have our mine. Did not mean to fall then. But uh, you can just imagine that this goes all the way down to like bedrock or however deep you wanna go. I'm lazy, so I just made it go uh, a couple of blocks down. But on the left side, we have our ladder so that we can come up from our mine. And on the right side, we have a big water pool so that we can just drop down and not take any damage. And then we can of course use this area down here to make some mine shafts or whatever we wanted. So that does it for all of the exterior base things. Now let's head on to the actual main base itself. So heading through the front door and turning to the left, we have our crafting wall. 
and also a little bit of smelting. We've got a whole bunch of barrels along the top for you to store some crafting materials and stuff like that. On the left side, we have our main crafting blocks, a couple of decorations as well. And then on the right side, we have our extended crafting blocks where we've got an anvil, a saw thing, and also a grindstone. I always forget what this is called, a stone cutter, that's it. Then on the right side wall, we have a little bit of a smelting area here. It's a bit of a weird configuration, but I felt like three furnaces wasn't enough, so I added an extra section here. We've also got some barrels along the top for you to store in any ores and stuff as well. And then to the right of this, we have our main storage area where we have a whole bunch of double chests. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the first floor. Now let's head up to the second floor where we have on the left our bedroom where we've got three beds to accompany you and up to two other sweaty gamers. We've also got my signature leaf design above the bed here and also some personal storage and some barrels and some extra little pot plants as well to spice it up a little. Then on the right side wall we have our enchanting area which of course does reach a full level 30. Now please forgive me for it looking a little bit weird. You can of course add a bookshelf here if you wanted it to be symmetrical but I feel like it made the area a little bit too cluttered so I took that one out but yeah you need this one here for it to reach level 30 which is a little bit annoying. I wish you could just leave it like that but you can't unfortunately. And then up the top here, we have some barrels for you to store in any enchanting related goods. And then to the left, we also have our brewing area where we've got three brewing stands. And then to the right of this, we have an infinite water source for your water bottles. Then to the left here through this door, we have our little mini balcony so you can have a nice little view. And you also have a quick way to exit your base if you open up this fence gate and jump down. And now for the final thing of the base, we can head all the way up our ladder, up the trap door. And we're now at the top of our main base where we have our nice blue flag, a couple of little detail blocks around the place. You don't really have to add these in. It just kind of makes the top of the base look a little bit nicer. And yeah, so that pretty much does it for the entire base. If you like the look of this base and want to build it for yourself, feel free to stick around and we'll get started in the tutorial right now. All right, so starting off the tutorial, you're of course gonna need a big flat open area like this one. And yes, before you say anything, I know I have just lazily kind of world edited in this big platform thing. What are you gonna do about it? Okay, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll fix it up. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. And now the first thing we're gonna be doing is heading to the center of our big area and adding in the outline of the main base that's gonna be in the center of the base. So let's just find the center point of our area, which I'm just gonna say is like right about here. And we're first gonna place in the front left block of that building. Then we're gonna leave a gap of three, so one, two, three, and then place another stone block. Then we're gonna leave a gap of one and place another one, and then another gap of three, and then place another block. Now, as we head to the right side, we're gonna be leaving a gap of four this this time and placing a block and then another gap of four and then another block and that's it for the side now we're going to do the same thing on the back leaving a gap of four a second gap of four and then again the same thing on this side as well and there we go that's the outline for our main base right in the center next we're going to be adding in the outline for the gatehouse and we're going to be doing this standing in line with the front door here which is like this is where the front door is going to be for the main base and we're going to count 12 blocks away from this so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve and then on this block here we're going to go left three so one two three place a block back to the center here if you kind of messed up like i did you can just align yourself up here and then count another three to the left. One, two, three, place a block. Now I recommend just quickly double checking your measurements, make sure that it is 12 blocks all the way up until here, just to make sure everything is all good with the base layout. Now heading back to our gatehouse area here, we're gonna be counting a two block gap away, placing a block and then another two block gap and placing another block. Then around to the front here, we're going to just place another block here in line with our original block and then place in another block here on the other side, creating a pattern kind of like this. Now with the front gatehouse done, we're gonna be adding in our first little watchtower and to get the placement right, we're actually just going to add in the front section of wall here. So we're going to head in line with this block here that's kind of like in the middle of our gatehouse. And to the right of this, we're going to be adding in a stone block, then a stone brick, and then another stone block. Then we're going to go in towards the base by one block, placing stone bricks, another stone, and then another stone bricks. Then we're going to go in once again, placing a stone and stone bricks, and then in once more, placing stone. Then to the right of this stone block here is where we're going to be starting off our outline for our first watchtower. So to the right of this, let's place in a stone block. We're going to leave a gap of three in between this and place in another stone block. Then we're going to head backwards, add in another stone block here, and then our final one right here. And we should be left with something looking like this. Now let's quickly repeat this on the left side as well. So to the left of this block here, a stone block, stone brick, stone, then heading back in towards the central base, another stone block, stone, and then I'm sick of saying stone at this point. You can just kind of watch what I'm doing and uh, yeah. <laughs> so at the last block here, we're going to be placing another stone bricks, leaving a gap of three, placing another block, leaving a gap of three at the back here, and then our final final pillar right there. Now you should have a layout looking like this. And now we're going to head back over to our right side here and continue on this exact same thing, except going over this way. So now from this corner block of the tower here, we're going to place a stone block to the right of that. Then we're going to come away from 
the base and place in an additional stone bricks and stone. Then we're gonna come away again, place in stone bricks, stone, stone bricks. <laughs> and then one more layer, stone, stone bricks and stone. Then to the right of this, we're gonna place an additional stone brick. And this stone brick here is pretty much exactly the same as the one over here. So now we're gonna count two blocks away from this, place in another block, another two in towards the center base, place in another block. Then we're gonna leave a gap of five. So one, two, three, four, five, place in another block here, here and here. Except this time on the front and back, we're actually gonna be placing blocks in the center of our two blocks here, as this isn't gonna be a gatehouse, this is gonna be an actual building. Actually, we can leave out the front one, the one that's kind of pointing in towards the base as we're gonna be adding in a door, forgot about that. And now, so you should pretty much get the point. We're gonna be just repeating this exact same thing on this side here. So we're gonna be adding in this section of wall, kind of mirroring it on this side, another watchtower. Then we're gonna add in another one of these buildings at the back and then link it all the way up to this watchtower here. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do that right now. And there we go, with everything done, you should have a layout looking like this. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually raise up all of the walls to the correct heights. And for this, you're gonna need a bunch of stone, a bunch of stone bricks, and also a couple of stone brick slabs. So everything on the walls here, except for the actual pillar blocks for the buildings themselves, all of these blocks are gonna be three blocks high. So we're adding an additional two blocks on top of this layer. So one, two. And then as we get to the stone brick blocks here, we're gonna be placing a stone brick slab on top of all of them. So we're, yeah, pretty much just raising up all of these blocks to be three blocks high, like so. And then yeah, chucking our slabs on top. And I didn't even listen to my own rules. I added one on top of the corner block here. I mean, we're gonna be raising this up eventually, but we'll do that as we actually get to the build. So yeah, just leave it like that. And now we're gonna be doing this to every single wall section, making sure to not do it on this one. And yeah, just raise up everything. You get the point. Okay, and now with all of our walls done, we should have something looking like this. It actually looks pretty cool. It kind of looks like some ruins or something. But uh, yeah, now we're going to be moving on to our front gatehouse. This is the one where we left out the blocks on the front and back side, or the one that's in line with these two blocks here of the central base. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is raising up all of these pillars to be seven blocks high in total, or adding an additional six on top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're gonna do this to all of the pillars. Now we're gonna be adding in some stripped spruce walls that are gonna be inset, meaning that they're on the inside of all of these pillars, not in line with the pillars, but yeah, on the inside like this. We're actually not placing one there, that's my bad. So we're gonna be placing some right here. Then we're going to be also adding in some here as well. Then on the back side, we're going to be placing in these ones as well. Now let's raise all of these up to be one block underneath the top height of the pillars. Now let's come to the front area once again and add in some upside down spruce stairs. These are gonna be on the third block up here and we're gonna add some on the other side as well. In between those, let's add in a spruce trapdoor and then also some more spruce trapdoors below those. And then on top of these blocks here, we're gonna be adding in some more strip spruce blocks all the way up to the top top here in line with the other ones. Now underneath this section that we just added, let's add in three spruce fence gates. Then we're also going to chuck in some azaleas on the left and right side. And at this point is where I'm going to mention that with all of the azaleas we're going to be adding around the place, you kind of want to just mix them up between flowering azalea and just regular azaleas. So yeah, just keep it kind of randomized. And yeah, we're also going to be adding them in on the sides here and all the way around the entire length of the walls, but we'll get back to this in a minute. But now coming back to the front of our gatehouse, let's add in a cool little arch design using some stone stairs and slabs. So we're firstly going to be placing some upside down stone stairs one block above this and then all the way to the left and place it right here. We're going to do the same thing on this side as well. Then above this, we're going to place a single stone slab, another one to the right, and then one above to make it a full block. And then one more stone slab right here. And then we're going to link it up on the other side as well. We're going to place in two stone brick blocks like so. And then in between these blocks all the way at the top, we're going to place some stone slabs on the bottom half all the way around. Let's just, yeah, add this all the way around. On the back here, we're obviously going to get back to this, but we can just add in a stone block here and one below that as well. And then coming back to the side, let's add in the rest of our stone slabs. Now underneath all these stone slabs, let's add in some spruce fence gates. And then coming back to the front, let's add in a lantern on top of both of these azaleas here. Now we're going to be adding in the opposite side wall from this one, so the inside gate here. And we're pretty much just repeating exactly what we just did on the front here. So let's add in our upside down spruce stairs on the sides here, spruce trapdoor in the center and below those as well. Then above this, we'll also add in our stripped spruce wood, bring this all the way up to the same height as all the others. Then let's place in a couple of azaleas with some lanterns on top. We're also going to add in our spruce fence gates on the bottom area here. And then we can add in our same stone arch design as well. So we're going to place our stairs, slabs, link this all the way up to the top and then branch this over to the other side as well. Now, as for the design on the side walls here, we're simply going to be adding in some oak leaves. These are going to be in line with the upside down stone stairs here. We're going to place them on both sides and then below and above those, we're going to be placing some spruce trap doors. Then also on the sides here, we're going to place some more azaleas and then place a lantern that is closest to the actual wall 
wall here. So on the other side, we're gonna add in our azaleas and place another lantern right here. And then let's of course repeat this on the other side, add in your leaves, spruce trap doors above and below. And then finally a lantern on this side here and then our azaleas and another lantern. And now to finish up our gatehouse, we're gonna be first adding in our pathway. And this is of course gonna be extended around the whole length of the base. And this is where you have a choice to make. For the pathway I'm gonna be adding in, it's gonna be textured with stone, gravel and andesite. I just really like this texture for any kind of pathway. If you can't be bothered doing that, you can of course just leave it as a solid block of either andesite, gravel or stone or whatever block you want. It's entirely up to you. You could even use coarse dirt and rooted dirt and grass path if you wanted. And so I'm just going to remove all of these blocks that the pathway blocks are gonna be on. And so this is going to extend all the way underneath the gatehouse here and through to the other side. Did not mean to remove that, oopsie daisy. And we might as well just branch this all the way up until the front door of our base, which is right here. Then let's come back around and then we can just extend the pathway out as far as we want. I'm not really linking this up to anything, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and texture it just randomly with stone, andesite, and gravel. Now with the pathway added in, let's head on inside, and then we're gonna, oops, did not mean to leave that block out. And we're just gonna choose one side to add a ladder on that's gonna extend all the way up to the top here. You can add one on both sides if you really want to. I'm just gonna leave it on one. And now we can head up our ladder all the way up to the top. On top of the ladder here, let's add in a spruce trapdoor, and then we're gonna fill in the rest of all of the blocks here with some spruce slabs. And now you can also add in a couple of decorative blocks like I did up here if you wanted, just to keep it looking a little bit interesting. I'm just gonna place a barrel and a chest right next to it. And I might also add in a lantern on top of this barrel. Why not? And yeah, there we go. We're now fully done with the gatehouse. Now let's move on to our watchtower, starting off with the front right one. So firstly, we're gonna be extending these pillars up to be eight blocks high in total or adding on an additional seven stone bricks. So we can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are also just one block higher than the gatehouse and all of the other side buildings. So now let's just raise up all of those pillars to be eight blocks high in total. Now, once again, we're gonna be adding in some inset stripped spruce wood blocks, similar to how we did for the gatehouse. So let's firstly add in a ring around like so, filling in this side, and then we're also going to be leaving a gap right here as we're going to be placing our door on. So we can actually just place in a couple of stone blocks here. Actually, we're going to be leaving these as grass, and then we can chuck our door on right here, I think. I think that's how it is. No, that's not how it is. Our door is actually going to be like this, my bad. So it's kind of on like the back area of this block. What we can actually do is just extend these strips, spruce wood blocks up like so, and then we're gonna place some upside down spruce stairs here. And yeah, your door should be looking like this. Now what we can do is actually raise up these strips, spruce wood blocks all the way up. We're gonna be raising them up one block below the very top here. And we're gonna be doing that on all of the corners. So let's just raise all of these up like so. Then for above the door here, we're gonna be placing an additional spruce stairs here. Above that, a spruce fence and then some more upside down spruce stairs, and then another strip spruce wood block on top of this. For the left side here, so the side beside the door, we're gonna be just raising this all the way up like so. We're also gonna add in some extra details on the side here, but we'll come back to this. And then on these front two sides here, these are both exactly the same. We're gonna be adding in some spruce stairs on the bottom. And then above this, we're gonna add in some spruce fence that go all the way up to here, kind of in line with the original fence that we added on this side. And then we're gonna finish it up with some upside down spruce stairs and an additional strip to spruce wood block. Now let's just repeat this exact same thing on this side like so. There we go. Then let's head back over to this side here, the blank side, and we're going to add in some oak leaves, kind of a similar design to this one. And so these leaves are going to be in line with these spruce stairs right here. So we can just stay in line with this, head over to this side, add in our strip of oak leaves like so. In the middle at the top and bottom, we're going to add in some slabs. And then next to those, some spruce trap doors to kind of enclose it in like so. Now it's on to adding the top design up here. So firstly, to the left of our pillar right here, we're going to add in a stone slab like so. We're going to do the same on this side as well. And we might as well I'll just do it all the way around. Then in between all these, we're gonna place a solid stone block like so. And then below all of these, we're also gonna be adding in some stone stairs. Then to the left and right of all these stone stairs, we're gonna be placing in some spruce fence gates. Next, let's head around to the front door here. And we're actually gonna head inside and add in our ladder that goes all the way up here on the left side. On top of this ladder, let's place in a spruce trap door. Similar to our gatehouse, we can also add in a couple of little details, maybe a chest or a barrel. You can also use this to store in any bows that you want to have up here to defend your base. And so now that's pretty much it for the actual watchtower design. We are also going to be extending these azaleas all the way across here and in front of the watchtower like so, making sure to mix in some flowering azaleas as well, so it's not just all boring old regular azaleas. And then for this as well, we're going to be placing some lanterns on these central azaleas, and then coming onto the inside, we're going to add some more 
azaleas. On this side here, let's add in a lantern right in the center. And then as we come to the front door here, we can just add in some extra azaleas and we can close that door up too. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is repeat this exact same design in every single corner where the watchtower layouts are. Now you're obviously going to have to rotate these as the door for this one isn't going to be facing out this side. So you're going to have to kind of mirror this on this side, making sure that our door is right here kind of on uh, this block. And then likewise for the ones back here, our doors are also going to be on these blocks like so, and then also on this block here, if that makes any sense. I'll go ahead and add all these in and show you how it is anyway. And there we go. So there's all of our watchtowers added in. Like I was saying before, our doors are still on the same places. And yeah, we've just kind of flipped it around so that the leaves are like facing in towards each other on every side. And then these windows are on the outside as well. Next one I'm gonna go ahead and do is add in the rest of the azaleas along the walls here. So I'm going to add all of these in along here, all the way up until this point, and then also on this wall, this wall, yeah, you get the point. And there we go, there's all of our azaleas added in. You can, of course, just leave this out if you wanted. It still looks really good without the azaleas. So yeah, it's just personal preference at that point. I would, however, recommend adding the azaleas in in front of the gatehouse, the other buildings, and also the watchtowers, as it looks pretty nice here. Okay, and now it's time to add in all of our side buildings here, the ones that actually have a use. And we're just going to be starting off by adding in the right side one. And so like the gatehouse, we're going to be raising up all of the pillars to be seven blocks high in total or adding on six blocks. Or we can just go one, two, three, whoopsie daisy, four, five, six, seven. Now let's add in our inset stripped spruce wood blocks. So I'm just going to place in the outline of it here. So at the front where the actual like inside entrance is going to be, we're going to be placing in a row like this with a gap in the middle. Then we're going to add in an additional one here. And then we're going to repeat this exact same pattern, kind of like an L shape in every single corner like so. And now we're also going to be raising all of these up to be one block below the top of the pillars. Now with all of that added in, let's head back to the front and add in the front entrance design. So firstly for the door here, we're going to be adding in an upside down spruce stairs block like so. And then we're also going to be replacing the floor block here with a stone block. We can also just replace all of the blocks on the inside here with some additional stone blocks just because. And now let's add in our door like so. Whoopsie daisy. There we go. Next, we're going to head all the way up to the top. And then on the left side here on the bottom half, we're going to add in two stone slab blocks like so. And then to the right of this, a stone bricks block, and then some more stone slabs on the right side. Now we're going to extend this all the way down and just covering up the gap here. And then finally adding in a stone brick slab on the bottom so that it's kind of in line with the top of the stairs here. Next, we're going to add in some oak leaves on the left and right side of this pillar. And then below and above those, we're also going to be adding in some spruce trap doors just like so. To the left and right of the door, we're going to be adding in some more azaleas. And then we're also going to be adding some lanterns on. We're going to place these on the left and right side of the door. Then all the way at the top here, we're also going to be adding in some spruce fence gates like so. And that's it for the front design. Next, heading on to the right side, we're going to be adding in some more azaleas. We might as well just quickly add those in on this side. And then we're also going to add them in on the outside as well in between all of these areas. Then we can also chuck our lanterns on. Once again, these are kind of in the closest spots next to the walls. And then on the outermost wall here, we're going to place our lanterns kind of on the furthermost away places. I don't really know how to explain it, but they're as far away apart as possible. And then our last lanterns like so. All right, so now heading back over to the right side, we can add in our wall design. And for this, what we're going to be doing is placing in our leaves once again. These are going to be in line with the same leaves over here. Placing some spruce trap doors above and below those. Also, if you're wondering why my leaves look nice and bushy, it's thanks to the, the Better Leaves add-on by Jermsey Boy. I highly recommend it. Makes the leaves look nice and sexy. Now, along the top here, we're going to be adding in our same stone slab design with some spruce fence gates below that. And now we're going to be repeating this exact same thing on the remaining two walls. So once again, adding in our oak leaves, we can just do this on the other side as well. And also adding in our spruce trap doors above and below those leaves. Now at the tops, let's add in our stone slabs and finish it up with some spruce fence gates underneath all of those. Now we can head on to the inside through the door and we can add in our ladder all the way at the back here in this little kind of cutout section. And we're gonna add this all the way up to the top, adding a spruce trap door on top of that. Then we can also just fill in the rest of all of the roof here with some spruce slabs like so. And once again, like the top of all of the other ones, we can also add in some detailing blocks up here. On top of these, cause we have a little bit more area to work with, I like to add in this design where we have a barrel to the right of that, a chest, and then an extinguished campfire beside 
inside the chest here and we can also add on a lantern on top of the barrel and you could also get away with maybe adding in an additional block on the other side or something like that and yeah so that's it for the entire design of the uh outer building things and so we're going to be repeating this exact same design in this section and this section right here and yeah i'm gonna go ahead and add all of those in right now okay and there we go that's all of the outside buildings done the only building left to add in now is our big main central one so let's head on over and the first thing we're going to be doing is raising up all of the pillars to be 11 blocks high in total or adding on an additional 10 blocks as we have the first block already placed so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven now let's do this to every single pillar now with all of our pillars raised up to the correct heights let's head to the front wall here which is the one with the two pillars right beside each other here and let's first add in our inset walls with some strip spruce wood so placing in three like so then we're going to raise up the corner block all the way up to the top just one block below the very top here and we're going to do the same on the right side as well now let's repeat this exact same thing on the other side here so we're going to add in our three along the bottom and then raise up our corners all the way up to one block below the top now for the rest of all of our walls around the sides we're simply going to be raising them all up to one block below the top here we're not going to leave a gap in the middle as this is four blocks wide instead of like three or five so we can't really add a window in as it looks a little bit weird and we're going to have some blocks on the inside covering them up anyway so let's just uh yeah continue adding in our walls and yeah just raise them all up to the correct height okay and there we go that's all of our walls added in let's head back over to the front wall here and add in all of the extra details so at the very bottom let's add in a couple of azalea blocks on top of the middle ones let's place in some lanterns and then we can add in our window designs on the inside like gap here that we left so directly behind the lantern let's add in two spruce fences and then above that some spruce stairs now we're going to repeat this on the other side as well then above these spruce stairs we're going to be placing in a stripped spruce wood block we're actually going to place in two of those and then in front of the first one here that we added on this entire layer we're going to be placing in a stone stairs on the middle block and to the left and right of that some stone slabs then on top of all these let's add in some more oak leaves like so and then we're going to add in our second window so we're going to place in another two spruce fences and then above that some more spruce stairs and finally some strips of wood on top of that now on top of the leaves here let's add in a flower pot and then just any flower of your choice so i'm going to go with the corn flower on this side and then at the top here let's add in some stone slabs all the way across and then below those we're also going to place in some spruce fence gates and now we're going to quickly repeat this on the other side so let's add in some stone slabs here we're also going to add in our two strips of wood blocks stone stairs right here we're also going to add in our oak leaves another pot this time let's maybe add in like a cornflower or actually not a cornflower a blue orchid so chuck that in then we're going to chuck in our two spruce fences upside down stairs strip spruce wood block then we can chuck in our stone slabs we're going to place one in the center here as well add in your spruce fence gates and yeah that's it for this side of the wall now we're going to add in the area where our door is so firstly where the actual door is going to be let's place in a stone block then we can chuck in our door like so standing on the inside then above the door let's place in some upside down stone stairs followed by some stone blocks like so we're going to place two then in front of the top stone block here let's place in some stone stairs followed by some stone slabs to the left and right of that then on top of these we're going to place a spruce fence in line with the pillars and and then in the middle block a spruce fence gate this is going to be our little balcony then up here we can also add in another door like so above that we're also going to add in some stone stairs and then in this little gap here we can place in a couple of spruce trap doors and close those up like so and now the last thing we can actually just chuck in some lanterns on these two corner pillar blocks and then we can also just add them in on the back ones as well why not and there we go that's it for the front wall design now it's onto the side back and other side walls and uh, yeah let's get started on those so firstly let's add in some azaleas and flowering azaleas along the bottom here making sure to keep it nice and randomized and then on top of the left and right side we're going to place in some lanterns and do that on both sides then in line with our stone stairs and slabs here we're going to do the same thing except we're going to be placing two stone stairs in the middle and then some slabs on the sides like so do this on both sides then on top of all of these let's place in some oak leaves and then all the way at the top here, we're going to add in our stone slabs in between all of these and then our spruce fence gates below those. And now the last little detailing block that I thought looked pretty cool was adding in some blank spruce signs all the way across. It kind of looks like some supporting pillars or beams or something like that. We're going to do that on the bottom and also the top area. And now that's it for the side wall design. We're going to be repeating this once again on the back and on the other side as well. So yeah, let's do that right now. All right, and there we go. That's all of the walls added in. Now let's head on through the front door, head all 
all the way down to the other side and we're actually going to be removing the central strip of strip spruce wood blocks like so. I apologize for this. I completely forgot that we're actually leaving this gap here. So yeah, just feel free to remove those and then we're going to be placing some ladders on the stone bricks behind that. Extending this all the way up to the top, placing a spruce trap door on top of those ladders. Now we're going to fill up the rest of the roof here with some spruce slabs. And uh, yeah, now with our roof added in, we're going to be adding in our flag design. And for this, we're going to be placing a stone brick block right in the center of the roof. To get to the center, we're just going to align ourselves up with all of these central pillars and then place on your stone block. Then on top of this, we're going to place a stone brick wall. And then we're going to place four spruce fences on top of this. So one, two, three, four. And then to the right of this, let's add in all of our flag blocks. Those are going to be blue wool and light blue wool. You can, of course, just use whatever color you wanted. Blue is my favorite color, so I'm going with that. So let's first add in two blue wool blocks like so. And then behind that, we're going to add in another two light wool blocks. Then coming back in line with our first ones, we're going to place one here. And then we're actually going to go down by one as well. And then going back in line with the light blue wool blocks, we're going to place another blue wool block like so. And yeah, that's it for our flag. It is pretty small, so feel free to make this a lot bigger if you wanted. But yeah, I really like the way this looks. So uh, that's how I'm going to leave it. And now up here, once again, like all of the other ones, we can add in some extra details around the place. So on the left side, we can maybe add in a double chest and a barrel. Then over in this corner, let's maybe add in a barrel with a chest beside that and then also an extinguished campfire. And then on the front corner here, we can maybe add in a barrel with a crafting table in front of it. And then we can place in a flower pot on top of the barrel with a corn flower or whatever flower you want inside of that. And there we go. Now the top roof looks a little bit more interesting. And there we go. We're now fully done with all of the actual building designs. All that's left to do now is obviously the interior of the buildings and also the interior exterior of our base around here, which is all of the farms. Okay, so let's first add in the rest of all of our pathway blocks around the place. And for this, I'm just going to be simply removing the blocks and I'll just go back and add in our textured pathway blocks at the end just to make it a little bit quicker. So all of the rest of these pathways are also going to be only one block wide as well. So coming to the front door here, we're going to obviously remove these blocks to the left and then we're going to just pretty much create a ring around the entire base, extending around to the back here and then back over to this side, linking back up with our original pathway right here. Now heading back over to the left, we're going to head right in the center and then just destroy this entire line all the way up. <coughs> oopsie daisy up until this door right here this is also meant to be a stone block underneath this door my goodness excuse me so yeah make sure that's stone and then we're going to head over to the back wall over here and do the same thing and then of course on the right side as well extending this all the way over and now that's it for all of the pathway blocks i'm going to go ahead and just fill all of these in with our textured blocks okay and now with all of our pathway blocks added in we're next going to be adding in our dividers that kind of separate all of the different farms so we're just going to head into any section around the base that is in between the watchtower and the base here. And so we're going to be adding in a little bit of a fence design in between these. So we're first going to be starting off with a spruce wood block, then followed by a stripped spruce wood block. And then we're just going to repeat this checkered pattern all the way up until we reach the edge of the watchtower here. Then on top of the stripped spruce wood blocks, we're going to place a spruce slab. And then on top of all of the spruce wood blocks, we're going to place a fence with a torch on top of all of those. And now we're going to repeat this exact same thing in every single corner of the base. And there we go. Now we're done with all of the dividers. Next up, we're going to be adding in all of the water for the farms that we're going to be adding in here. And so these are all going to be placed in some pretty specific locations in order for our farms to be fully uh, waterized whatever I don't know how to explain it but uh the moist farmland I guess so firstly let's add in some water that's going to be under all of the spruce wood blocks here then we're going to head over to the wall here and underneath this stone column we're going to add in some water and then we're also going to add in some water underneath this stone brick column right here then heading over to the pathway we're going to be replacing this block right here with a stone slab and putting some water inside of that and then for our final water block we're going to stand on this corner here of our gatehouse we're going to count three blocks away diagonally so one two three and then place a water bucket inside of this block now we can replace all of these blocks here with some grass and then we're going to go ahead and till all of this into some farmland and uh, also what we can do quickly is also place in a spruce slab on top of this this will just simply waterlog the water underneath and chuck in a composter on top of that and yeah so now just go ahead and till all of this into some farmland with all that done i will quickly mention that uh, i decided to leave this block here in front of the door not tilled as i just felt it was kind of weird you can also choose to add in a pathway that links up to your main pathway if you want all the way along here i just felt like the watchtowers wouldn't really be used too often and I uh, felt like the farmland space was a little bit more useful. Also if you don't like the weird gap underneath here I mean it's going to be covered up by the crops anyway but if you don't like it you can extend the block underneath 
with a slab like this. I'm not gonna do it as it's extra resources that we don't really need to spend. And now we're gonna be repeating this exact same thing in every single section. So we're gonna be counting three blocks away from here, replacing this block here with some water and also a composter. We're gonna be placing our water underneath these blocks like so. And also this block right here on our pathway, replace it with a stone slab and some water. And then also underneath the rest of all of these dividing blocks as well. And obviously just make sure to leave one of these blank, whichever one that you want your animals to be in. I'm gonna make it this one here, the same as the one in the tour, which is kind of the, at the very back on the left right here. If you wanted your animals to be at the front, then yeah, just obviously leave this one blank and fill in the rest with farmland. Okay, there we go. That's all the farms added in. As you can see, we've decided to alternate between carrots and wheat as I just really like the way it looks. And yeah, the base is really starting to come together now. All that we have to do is our back animal farm section and the interiors. And uh, yeah, so we'll first be starting off with the animal section over here. And the setup for this is a little bit weird. So please forgive me for this, but this is the best way that I could find to fit in like the most different amount of animals. So we're going to have three separated pens, ones for chickens, sheep and cows, or well, of course, whatever animals you want. And so let's start off at the front here. We're going to be adding in some spruce fences all the way across to the side. Then we're going to add one fence going this way, then followed by a spruce fence gate, and then another two fences to the right of that, followed by two spruce fence gates, and then another fence. Now we're going to extend this fence all the way down to the back here in line with our azalea, and then we're going to branch it off to the left here. Now heading back to the front, we can head through our fence gate and add in another row of fences. This time it's going to be in line with this fence here, and then just extend this all the way to the back. Now in order for our animals to not be able to jump out of this area here, we're going to have to add in some more fences in front of all of these just like so. Uh, we can actually leave this one out here. But yeah, if you don't want to have to add in these fences, you can, of course, just replace these fences here with some slabs, but it will, of course, look different to the rest of the base. So I just found doing this looks best. And now for the final pen, we're going to head all the way to the back here. To the left of these azaleas, we're going to add in our row of fences and extend this one block past here. And then we're going to extend this all the way down to the left here. And now I'm just going to add in our fence gate on this fence right here. You can, of course, just add this in wherever you want. You can also add in more fence gates along the fences here. It's completely up to you. And yeah, so that's it for the animal pens. You can now, of course, just add in your animals. Oh, also we can remove this fence as well. Actually, no, we can't. And yeah, I'm not gonna add those animals in now because they're just loud and annoying. And now we're fully done with the entire exterior of the base. Next, what we're gonna go ahead and do is fill in all of the interior for our outside buildings, starting off with the left side here, which is gonna be our secondary storage. All right, so heading on inside, let's firstly add in some double chests in this gap here. So we're gonna be placing some single chests all the way up here, and then we can fill in the rest with some more chests to make some double chests. Now we're going to do the same thing on the right side here. And then beside all of these, we can add in some single chests all the way up to the ceiling on the right and left side as well. And there we go. That's pretty much it for the actual chests. Now what we can do is extend this slab down by one and place a lantern on top of that. And then for the floor, we can add in a checkered pattern with some polished andesite. But yeah, now with that done, we're fully done with our secondary storage building. And now we can head on over to the back building. All right, so heading on inside, what we can first do is remove all of these floor blocks here in a straight and replace them with some obsidian. We actually don't need to add in the corner ones. Now we're going to extend this up all the way up here, and then we can just use a temporary block here and place in an additional obsidian block. You might actually want to place that temporary block like here so you can actually remove it later. And then we're going to extend this all the way across here and then add in the strip on the side as well. Now to make this a toggleable nether portal, we're going to be adding in some dispensers. Uh, make sure these are actually facing towards the portal and not on this block here. We want these one block down. And underneath these, we can hold shift and place on a couple of buttons. Now on the left one here, let's place in a flip and steel, and on the right one, a water bucket. And now what we can do is press the left one to turn the portal on, and press the right one twice to turn it off. Now let's add in a bit of a checkered pattern floor, so we're going to be placing some polished andesite in pretty much all of the corner blocks. And then directly in front of the ladder here, we're going to be extending this spruce slab down and chucking a lantern on. And there we go, that's pretty much it for our portal room. Okay, and now heading over to the final exterior building, which is the right building. Let's head on inside and add in our mine entrance. So starting off right in the center, let's chuck in a polished andesite block. Then we're gonna be removing all of these stone blocks around the place, also in these little cubbies here. And these are pretty much all gonna be extended as far down as we want to go for our mine. I'm just gonna extend this down a couple of blocks as I don't really have all day to do this. And something as well that we can do to make this look a little bit nicer is replace all of the blocks here 
here with some stone blocks. This is, of course, completely optional. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that because, uh, once again, I don't have all day and I'm lazy. Now, in front and behind of our polished andesite block, we're going to place back in our stone blocks here. And then on the left side of this block, we can place it. Oops. <laughs> we can place in our ladder that goes all the way down. And then also while we're down here on the right side here, we can remove these four blocks. And I'm just going to place a lantern here so you can actually see. And uh, we're going to be replacing these with some stone slabs and placing some water inside of those as well. And now what that enables us to do is to just drop down on the right side and not take any damage. And then we can use the ladder on the other side to climb all the way back up. Okay, and now back up here, we're going to be adding in a spruce slab on this block here and then also a lantern. On the left side in this little gap here, we're going to place a spruce slab right here. We're also going to do the same on this side. On the left side, we're going to place two furnaces, two blast furnaces, and then finally a barrel at the top. We can actually actually want this to be facing outwards like so. And then on top of this, we're going to fill in this little gap here with a spruce slab. Now on the right side, we're just going to place in a whole bunch of chests. And yeah, with that, we're now fully done with the mine entrance building. Now it's time to head on over to our big boy right in the center. Heading on inside, let's first add in the ceiling for our second floor. And this is going to be on the top half of the fifth block up. So one, two, three, four, five, and then on the top half of this block. And so we're actually going to start it on this block here as on the inside here, we're actually going to be extending this stripped spruce wood on the inside here all the way up until just one block below the door. On the inside here, we're going to place some upside down spruce stairs and then continue our stripped spruce wood up to this point here. Now we can fill in the rest of the ceiling with some spruce slabs. Next, we can add in our lanterns and these are going to be spaced one block away from the edge of the ceiling here. So placing our first lantern here and then one block away from this side, a slab and a lantern. Next, let's replace all of the ground blocks here with some stone. Actually, forget what I just said. We're actually going to be replacing all of the outer blocks here with some stone as we're going to be adding in a checkered pattern with some polished andesite. I thought I'd just save you a couple of stone blocks. Okay, and now with this ring added in, we have obviously a big square in the center. So let's first place in some polished andesite blocks on all of the corners. And then we're going to branch this out into a full checkered pattern around the place, just like so. And now we can fill in the rest of all of the blocks with some stone blocks. All right, and now onto the left side wall, which is gonna be our crafting and smelting wall. Let's first add in a strip of barrels at the top all the way along here. And we're also gonna fill in this little gap here with some more spruce slabs. Now, right in the center, let's add in three furnaces. And then to the right of these furnaces, we're going to be adding in a loom, crafting table, and a smithing table. And then on the right side, let's add in a stone cutter, an anvil, and then also a grindstone. Now, next to the furnaces, let's add in some upside down spruce stairs. And then in front of all of those spruce stairs, pretty much underneath all the barrels, let's add in some spruce trap doors. Now for some extra details, on top of the smithing table, let's add in a lantern. To the right of that, a flower pot with an azalea. And then finally, on top of the anvil over here, we're going to add in another lantern. Now onto the right side wall, let's firstly add in our secondary furnace section. So at the top here, let's add in a single barrel right here. Then we're going to add another barrel to the left of this. And then we can just place a temporary barrel here so that we can place our last barrel like so can remove this one as well. Now underneath these, let's add in some furnaces. We're also going to add in the corner ones as well as we can actually access these. And then we're going to do the same thing all along the bottom here adding in some extra furnaces. Now on the outermost ones, let's connect them up using some spruce fences. And then at the back here, let's add in some detail blocks. So firstly, an extinguished campfire in the middle, a flower pot with a corn flower, and then on the right one, a lantern. And now for all of this section to the right of this, we're gonna just pretty much fill all of this in with some double chests, extending this all the way up to the top of the ceiling here, and then bringing this all the way down to the front of the wall. And there we go, that's everything done for the first floor. Now let's head up the ladder up to the second floor. So firstly, let's head all the way to the front of the base here and add in a strip of slabs like so. Then one block spaced away from this in the center, we're going to place another slab and a lantern on. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side here, leaving a gap of one, place another slab and a lantern. Now onto the left side wall, let's add in our bedroom design. So firstly, we're going to place a red bed in the center and then to the left and right of that, some more red beds. Or this can be whatever color you want. I just like red because, uh, yeah. Now to the left and right of these beds, we're going to place some barrels. And then to the left and right of those barrels, we're going to place some stripped spruce wood blocks. Now on top of the leftmost block here, let's place in a flower pot with a corn flower. And then on the right side, another flower pot with a blue orchid. Now above the bed here, let's add in three oak leaves. In the middle on the top and bottom, let's add in some spruce slabs. And then we're going to surround the rest of the leaves with some spruce trap doors. And also, I almost forgot, we're also going to add in some lanterns on top of our barrels here. And now to finish up the left side, we're simply going to be surrounding the beds with some red carpet or whatever color bed you have as well. Just use the same color carpet. And uh, yeah, now turning around to the other side wall, let's first add in our enchanting area. And for this, we're simply going to be adding in some bookshelves on the back wall here. We're going to extend this up one block below the top of the ceiling. And then we're going to extend this all the way to the left by an additional four blocks so that it's five blocks wide like so. Then on the left side, let's add in a strip like so. We're going to do the same on the right side and then 
also add in an additional block here. And on top of this, for some decoration, we can chuck on a large amethyst bud. Now on this block right here, let's add in our enchanting table. We can also ensure that this does reach a full level 30 like so. And yeah, without this bookshelf, it only reaches level 28, which is very frustrating. So yeah, we unfortunately need to have this weird bookshelf here. Okay, now at the top, we can add in our three barrels here, and then we can add in our extra barrels that's gonna be on top of these bookshelves. And we can also fill in the gaps here with some more spruce slabs. Now on the left side here in this little nook, we can add in our brewing area. So firstly on the left, let's add in a polished andesite block. And then to the right of this, let's place some polished andesite stairs that are kind of facing in towards the back wall. And so in these stairs, we're gonna place a water bucket for our brewing needs, obviously. And then going up by two blocks, so one, two, and on the top half of this block, we're gonna place a spruce slab with a spruce trap door coming away from it, kind of facing in towards the window. Now I just realized there's this little gap here, so we can actually place in another barrel and we can use this for our brewing storage as well, which is pretty cool. So now on top of all of these blocks, let's place in some brewing stands and also down here as well. Obviously not on top of this as uh, it's kind of weird. I mean, you could if you wanted to, as you can still access the water, but I feel like it looks better like this. And now the last thing to do is simply place in some spruce signs in front of these blocks here. And there we go. With that, we're now fully done with the entire base design. So if you enjoyed this base and the tutorial, feel free to leave a like as it helps me out a lot more than you think. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos as well, feel free to subscribe. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.